you hear MOA talked about a lot in reference to rifles. Well, you got 360 degrees, so if you take one of those degrees and you were to take that and break it up into 60 minutes, you have a minute of an angle. From wherever you are, out 100 yards, what that translates to is 1.047 inches. So when they say it's an MOA rifle, what you're talking about is the rifle is capable of shooting one inch for the number of shots at 100 yards. So I'm here at the Browning headquarters in Morgan, Utah to see what goes on inside the office. There's been this, this talk within the hunting industry that uh, custom guns are the only guns able to shoot long distance of 700 yards plus, the only things that can do it accurately. And uh, we're, we're here to find out if that's true. We're gonna check out the line production guns of, of Browning and, and see if, in fact, they can shoot 700 yards to 1,000 yards plus. We met with Marcus, the quality control manager at Browning, to see how they test the accuracy of their rifles in a controlled shooting environment. So, just in case I'm an apocalypse, there's floor to ceiling ammunition in here for every gun you could ever want. We do do this underground so that we can control atmospheric conditions. We don't have crosswinds, we don't have extreme temperatures. We're trying to test the rifle for what it is and not every other aspect. To determine a gun's accuracy, it starts and ends with MOA, minute of angle, a one-inch bullet grouping of three shots at 100 yards. The, the way we measure it is from center hole to center hole. So I take it and I can go to the outside of that hole. It's the most outside one. Two shots furthest apart. Two shots furthest apart, yep. So that one's going to be... Wow. Three quarters. Inch. Yep. Quarters of an inch. I'll take it. It'll do on any hunting round, huh? So every gun's different and every, every ammo is different. That's why we test a variety of different ammo. We test to make sure that everybody's, that all ammo specs shoot out of our, our guns the best way they possibly can. Morally, um, I want to get as close as I possibly can to an animal, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, as a hunter, it's part of, the, part of the process of me hunting is I want to get as close to that animal as possible. One, for my skill set, um, and, and two, for the humane reason of, of shooting the animal. You want a, a clean, easy kill. When we start reaching out to six, seven, eight, nine hundred yards, a thousand yards, we're doing that just to prove that the gun can do it. I killed a deer for 90 something two years ago. So I mean, I pulled the trigger. With the brownie? Yeah, oh yeah. No, I'm set up to, it's, it's funny, even last year, my, my uh, speed rifle set up to shoot to 1,000 and I shot my deer at 50 yards. <laughs> Just that's the way it goes. It's sometimes the way it goes, yeah, for sure. This is the X Bolt Western Hunter. You can find this on a retail, about $900. This is the X Bolt Hell's Canyon Speed Rifle. You can find this at retail, about $1,100. And this is the uh, carbon fiber long range hunter. You can find this in retail for about $1,300. Let's look at the costs. Browning's best long range rifle costs approximately $1,300 off the shelf, while a custom rifle can cost between $4,000 and upwards of $10,000. We know that Browning's rifles can shoot with sub MOA accuracy, and we have to assume that custom rifles will do the same. Another factor to consider is ammunition. Browning guns can shoot all ammunition, while custom built rifles have to shoot custom built ammo. So we came out to the uh, Golden Spike shooting range with Aaron and Rafe from Browning. And Aaron's going to put the uh, Browning x bolts to the test and see if we can hit some steel at 1,000 yards today. So when you get to that distance, you got a lot more variables at play too. Yeah, way more variables. Well, one, I mean, you can imagine if you're at five feet at 100 yards, if you're not perfectly vertical, then, then your, your trajectory is doing this instead of this. Yep. So that's the reason why you should have a level on your scope with those distances. The other thing is, is you even have to take into account your, the bullet spinning, and as it's spinning, it's catching the air. So your left, left twist will go left and your right twist will go right. So 
see, see if it'll hit a thousand then. <laughs> Wanna go to a thousand? How about we do 600 first? That's a good hit for 600 right off the bat. You're about a half inch off of it. Left, left corner, left low corner. You're four for four at 600 yards. You're like four for four in this big of an area. All I know is that is a very dead deer. 900? Just a little block, slightly right. Good low. Yeah, right. A little high left where you were. That's a nice little group at 900 yards. I mean, you're almost touching all three bullets. He, I mean, it's, yeah. it pretty much is touching. That's insane. I was blown away at 600. Now at 900, having a three inch group. And this wind too. Yeah, the wind is, it's a it's gusty wind too. It keeps picking up and setting down. We'll, uh, we'll let the gun cool and we'll send the drone out there. I'll run out there and paint it up. It's a long ways. <clears throat> crazy. So Aaron's about ready to take this gun out to a thousand yards. Um, we'll see how active it can be. We good? Hit. Right next to it, slightly lower. Good group though. Four o'clock on the edge of black. Three o'clock. Yep. Wow. Five for five. Too bad. Just drilled at five for five. You need to do it now. Thousand? Thousand. Where do you hold it? I dialed in. Just crosshairs. It's just crosshairs? Straight crosshairs. Hold right on? Yeah, hold right on. You should be on target. Thousand yards, baby. Thousand yards. <laughs> it's only one. That's Keep the going. first time I've ever shot it. Keep going. Uh, off, off at 11 o'clock. Your drone was in trouble on that one. <laughs> 10 o'clock area. Three for four. Three for four. At a thousand yards. On a gun that you just got behind. So we're at our 900 yard target and what we're looking at is this was three consecutive shots at 900 yards. We're probably about four inches, 900 yards. So we're, I was pretty good shooting, especially when my hold point because of the wind was probably out here. So got a little bit of wind to play with, but uh, the gun certainly can do it. Well, this is also something that's kind of interesting is, is shooter to shooter, everyone holds the gun differently. So they'll actually, the point of impact will change. So I was shooting here, Lorenzo gets the rifle and he's putting them up here. And he's got actually a really nice group up here, but just by holding the rifle differently, you'll have a shift in where the bullet's impacting. Needless to say, the long range hunter took care of business. So why are we so obsessed with custom built rifles? Let's consider the theory of incremental gains, the idea that owning something 1% better can make a world of difference.
To better understand, let's look at another market, televisions. Right now you have the option to buy an HD or 4K television. HD projects a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels, while 4K has a resolution of 3840 by 2160, twice as much as the HD TV. But does that mean it's twice as good? Like the ammunition that custom rifles require to perform properly, 4K TVs need 4K resolution content to display its maximum resolution, and there isn't much 4K content available yet. However, the biggest factor in all of this is the viewer. Just how good are their eyes? Are they able to pick out drastically more detail in 4K? But most importantly, are they not entertained? With all that being considered, are you willing to buy something drastically more expensive for small gains, especially when the biggest variable is you? I love the look, look of them. Gun. I mean, the Cerakote. I, this is it. You know what these will do. Yes. If, if, this, if I don't shoot this the first time and shoot a group un, a, a, under an inch, I'll be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But I fully expect that it will. There's, in fact, there's no doubt in my mind. It'll shoot out of the box, brand new, never been shot. So. In your head, do you ever compete with a cust the custom side? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, anytime, when you want to be the best there is, sure you do. Now, on a day in, day out basis, those people have their niches, they have their, you know, they do all the little hand things and they say, well, we know this and we know this. But what we're looking at is decades of experience, John Browning being the guy he was, taught all of those people and that knowledge is passed down. And then the manufacturing facilities obviously work with our people and we teach them how to do things. And what you end up with are people with a lot of knowledge, a lot of pride, and a lot of desire to be the best. And so they'll do the extra steps. Well, a lot of people don't want to put that time. Every, every minute you put into building a firearm costs you money. Well, we at Browning believe that those costs are worth it. I've always said for years, Browning makes the finest production barrel on the planet Earth. These products are basically built one at a time. In a production setting, we were painstakingly um, aware of the details and put all the little things into making the product um, like a custom product. This was my first time shooting a thousand yards. Before this, I've never even thought of taking a shot like that. And while the gun proved to consistently put bullets on target, I was unable to make the shots that I needed to that day. Look, I saw and learned firsthand. When it comes to long range shooting, the performance of the rifle is second to the ability of the shooter.